Hi, I'm John Biggs, and I'm here with Ocean, the CEO of Handy. Now, Handy is an on-demand everything service, right? You guys do everything from pet sitting, pet walking, to IKEA furniture building, to whatever else. Handy's all about making it really easy to get what you need done inside your home. Okay. So you need a cleaner, a handyman, a plumber, that's where we really started. So no, not focus. a lot of pet walking. Not a lot. I mean, we could we could do it on this grass just for entertainment. Because that would have been my so nice. ultimate service. Like, the guy comes in, builds your IKEA furniture. Right. Then installs a new sink. Okay. Then walks your dog. Is that like just because that's what you want to do on an average Saturday? That would be a dream come true, yeah. Got Can it. Can we do that? I mean, we could do two of the three. And okay. we'll get to the third one. All right. But we've really focused on things that build brand and trust and credibility. Sure. So cleaning is the core of what we do today because it gets us in your home on a regular basis. We're there every week, every two weeks, every four weeks. You start to trust the brand, you trust Handy. And we've gotten to a place where we're in, you know, we're in over 100,000 homes a month at the moment. And that's a pretty incredible volume okay. to, to be in after just over two years. 100,000 homes. So we got how many people in New York? Uh, About 1.8 million in Manhattan. Manhattan itself. Yeah. So that's a, that's a big number, but that's not everybody. What does it take to get in everybody's homes? Look, I think it takes a service that's so incredibly easy to use that it just draws people in. And it's so incredibly easy for our service pros to use, it just draws them to the platform to earn money. Okay. So we're in about, we're, we're in 28 cities today. So 25 in the US, Toronto, Vancouver, and Canada, and London as well. And they, both, they all continue to grow at this pace, and it's really just about making sure that the service is incredibly easy to use. Okay. So what are, uh, so a lot of these on-demand services are popular now. What are some of the challenges that you guys faced when you were trying to get, I don't know, a plumber to cut in somebody's house on time, really? What was the, how, how do you ensure that that happens for folks? You're, you're absolutely right. Bridging this gap between the little, the little pixels on the iPhone and the real world service yep. happening is really hard. And that's part of the defensibility that we've built up at Handy today. And it's got to do with employing technology to make it really easy for everyone to know what's happening at every step of the way. So the customer who knows the service pro is gonna be five minutes late isn't actually that angry. It's the uncertainty of not knowing is the pro gonna be 15 minutes late, five minutes late, or okay. 30 minutes late. So it's trying to drive at that Uber-like experience where you see 30 minutes out, you can see your pro on a map, you can communicate back and forth, you can ask them, hey, can you pick up this from the store for me? You can actually communicate about what the job is gonna be like. And taking those friction points out are what gives the customer that, you know, the trust in the brand. So let's say I'm a plumber, I've been a plumber for, I don't know, 20 years, my sons, plum my sons are plumbers. Why do I need you guys versus just my base of customers that I have in the neighborhood? Why do I need to use a service to get my truck rolling when my truck can roll no matter what? Like I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, somebody's gonna have a toilet clogged up somewhere in the world and I'm gonna be able to get there. There's two ways to think about it. One is everybody's got a little bit of downtime and it's about how you fill that downtime in the most frictionless way. So the same way we talk about the customer experience as coming to the app, pressing a button, putting in a zip code, making a booking. On the service pro side, the alternatives are really clunky. So you think about you know, advertising on Craigslist or the Yellow Pages or going to lead gen platforms. That involves so much back and forth, so much communication with every customer, providing you know, essentially bids on every single job. Whereas with Handy, it's you just look at your phone. Once you've been vetted and verified and background checked, you simply look at your phone. It says there is a faucet replacement job on the Upper East Side tomorrow at 10 a.m. You simply claim the job or don't claim the job. It tells you exactly what you're going to get paid. Once you press the button, you know if you show up on time, you're, you're going to get paid exactly what it says. So that's the frictionless way of thinking about it. The other way to think about it is you have all of these jobs that are in disparate parts of your neighborhood. Wouldn't it be far more efficient if we could route you to jobs that are really nearby? Okay. And it's that efficiency that, that really makes it attractive to service pros. And then on the other hand, I'm still the 20, I'm still been doing this for 20 years. And Have I don't you want really? That, are no, you I'm really just, a plumber? Let's, let's, we're doing this right, hypothetically. Right, we're, we're I, can, I installed a, I installed a, a uh, faucet, one of those touch, touch faucets yeah. once. Yeah. Did how it all I, by myself. How did it go? Did you get electrocuted? No, I was fine because it's right. only a nine volt battery. It was all right. Uh, I also did a, I also did a sink trap, so I'm yeah. proud of that. Regardless. So you've got skills. I've got skills. I could become a plumber if I wanted to. That said, if I am a plumber, 20 years experience, I don't want that. I don't want that transparency. I want to be able to go into a nice house and say 500 bucks, and a not so nice house and say 200, because that's sort of my right as a uh, 
wage earning worker in a capitalist society. I can I can change my can change my price depending on the market. Does that does that come into play here? Or? Look, to date, what we've focused on is making it incredibly transparent and making it really easy in terms of the pricing. So we haven't allowed for price discrimination, and it's not really our goal for the next you know six, 12, 18 months to allow for price discrimination uh, price discrimination based on what size house the customer sure, is sure, sure. It's not really a direction we want to take the take the service. So we really focused on price transparency, making it really frictionless for the buyer and really frictionless for the seller. Okay, so this is for a newer, more, less entrenched uh, plumber or, or fix-it person who wants to jump into the business, or what, what, are the, what, are the, what are the age ranges, I guess you could say? I mean, we see everybody from 25 through to 60 gravitate into the platform as service pros. There's no, there, there's no bias in terms of age, and in terms of the, the services being offered. There is a little bit of a technology bias, which drags people, it drags sure, the sure, age sure. curve down slightly, but I think that's more of a result of the technology rather than uh, a pricing desire. Now, I go all around the country and around the world, and I see startups in different cities, you guys are based here in New York, which kind of gives you a leg up. Do you think there's going to be a consolidation of these service uh, systems where you guys are going to start buying out smaller players in smaller cities? Do you think that's happening yet? Have you seen it, Have you seen it happening that way? I mean, we've made a couple of, a couple of acquisitions already. So we bought Exec in San Francisco, which gave us a, a, probably a leading position in San Francisco as the leader in on-demand cleaning. Uh, we bought Mop in London, which was the leading player at the time, and we're now the leader in London in terms of on-demand cleaning. So I think you've already started to see it happen. Uh, I, I'm not sure how many other players there are that we're, we're focused on at the moment. It's not, a, it's not a big number. I think we've gotten to a place where in the U.S., in Canada, and the U.K., uh, we've built ourselves out as the leader in on-demand cleaning, and that's the brand that we're going to use to trickle down into all these other service verticals. All right, super. So where can people find you online? Handy.com. Handy.com. How much did that cost to buy? That was not cheap. That was not cheap? That was not cheap. $3,000. It gives me heartburn every time we talk about it, so I don't want to talk about it. Should have just had thehandy.com. That would have been I, fine, I, right? I, I don't want to talk about it. All right. Thanks a lot <laughs> no, for being here. When we first bought Handy Book, I think that was a couple of thousand dollars to buy that domain. But look, we, what we ended up with was a scenario where customers were thinking about it as a physical book rather than the service that you press gotcha, a button yep. on. So we, we moved to Handy. I think, it was a, I think it was the right choice. All right, super. Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, enjoy the rest of your time here at Disrupt. Thanks so much. Thanks.